Hello everyone, welcome back once again. It's me, Nick. Yes, I'm here again. And if you've seen any of the other of these videos, you know what to expect. You might be watching them in a row, or you might be watching this one individually. But we're going to have a recap of ZX Spectrum games reviewed on the channel 1,151, yes, through to 1,200. That's 1,200 in old money. So here we go. If you uh, like any of the clips, then track down the full video of any of these games. Here we go, baby. We start with a very unrepresented sport of show jumping. This game called show jumping. You try and control this horse over a number of jumps in the correct order, and from screen to screen, it gets a little bit more complicated. And if you do all of them, it's on to the next round of fences. An odd subject to pick for sure, because I don't know what uh, people are into gaming who are also into show jumping. I suppose there'll be some, but it's uh, aiming at a very niche area of the market. But if you want show jumping, well, then go for this one. Then we go to Alter Ego. This was a, a homebrew by Retro Souls. Basically, you control this character going up and down ladders and stuff, uh, and you must get all the uh, the pink things uh, to order to uh, get to the next stage. It's very, very clever in what it does, and anything by Retro Souls is worth checking out. I really like this. To be quite a few good homebrews in this uh, 50 we're going to have a look at going through. Uh, Starfield in the background there oozes quality all the way through the whole thing. Yes. Cracking Day Out, another one of the Egghead games starring Egghead. I don't think this was fully released uh, back in the day, so it's classed as a sort of a homebrew sort of thing. It was supposed to come out to represent the uh, computer museum somewhere or other, but never happened due to, um, I don't know, internal wranglings about the museum itself. But anyway, it's not the most sophisticated Egghead game uh, there, but they were pretty good near the end. This is a bit before uh, the end ones, but uh, you know, uh, for platforming it's quite good. Mad Nurse. Now this is a very weird hospital. You control this nurse going up and down different floors and she must put the babies back in the cots because they jump out. You must try and prevent them from hurting themselves on electrical wires and all sorts of uh, anomalies. So um, yes, I don't think you can get away with this back in the day but um, or, well now I should say but back in the day everything was fair games or who cares. 8-bit uh, was a crazy weird world where um, you know complaints were minimal. Jeff and the Blue Notes based on that guy Jeff Lane from uh, ELO. He must go around collecting all the notes in every single level. Good music here, uh, good level design as well, quite innovative too because it like, um, takes away the blockiness of normally you would have the border around the, the sides, lots of curves and stuff. Uh, it's quite tricky in places, uh, the jumping takes a little bit of getting used to but it's a it's a cool homebrew and I think it's worth checking out. You can download this for free on Spectrum Computing and probably a world of Spectrum as well. Uh, Fairlight, one of the classic ice symmetric games back in the day. There's quite a lot to do here and you'll gradually figure it out through trial and error. Go through this isometric world uh, trying to solve clues, pick up objects, dump them in certain places and save the uh, day. Music playing throughout the whole thing in the 128 version. Uh, there, I've clicked up a scroll here, your life meter will go uh, gradually uh, down but it's not something you would have completed on your first go, I think you only completed it with a guide. Uh, Impetus, it's a shooter from Inafuto, not the smoothest or quickest shooter in the world but uses the standard engine which Inafuto seems to use on all his games. Um, it's been ported to other systems too but I haven't looked at them uh, quite yet. One complaint of this game is it's a little bit too easy because of the slow moving of it and it's very easy to get out of the way of stuff. There's quite a few uh, extra lives so better shooters are available but interesting to see. In the future games work a little bit better on the platforms he does and the puzzle games rather than these out and out shooters. Uh, Nemesis the Warlock based on the character from the comic 2000 AD. Uh, we're shooting people as much as we can do to get to the next stage and that's essentially it really. Uh, Nemesis the Warlock was a character from that comic, I don't know quite what he did. I don't think there's a film based on Nemesis the Warlock, but there's quite a few games called a Nemesis. This is the one where it's the uh, the platformer where you're shooting stuff with special weapons all the way through. Good luck with this, but uh, it's not a classic, but it's alright graphically. Elevator action from the arcades. Uh, this guy is going down on a rope 
uh, into this building in some, uh, well, enemy base. And you must find secret plans hidden behind one of these doors, uh, well, a few of these doors, whenever they're red. Go in and out, don't get shot. And the idea is once you've got all the plans, you descend to the ground level of this building, avoiding all the henchmen and all the nasties to um, get to a waiting car to then make your escape. It's a good conversion, it's quite good fun. Batlot, another one from Inafuto, and this is where he's a bit better as opposed to the shooters. Uh, you must um, infiltrate the base there. You, their base is green, your base is white. Uh, the enemy will be trying to shoot your base, but you've got to make sure that you shoot uh, the enemy's base first before they get to uh, you or shoot your boss on. That's a good thing you need to do. I don't think it says shoot their boss in the instruction, but that's, that's what you need to do. Survive as long as you can, destroy as many bases as you can. About 10 levels, it does loop round again. Uh, Fairlight 2, but very similar to Fairlight 1, but got a slightly different map. I found it ever so uh, slightly more difficult to navigate around the thing. Again, music is playing throughout. You see, across the top there, there's all different spaces or objects we collect. Again, take them to the right place, solve the puzzles, and then escape. So, a nice little adventure, and you would have got a nice warm feeling if you completed this back in the day. It's isometric fun, doesn't seem to slow down uh, too much uh, there, and it again looks doable if you had a guy telling you what to do. Uh, Race Fun, a very, very basic game from the early days. Uh, basically, you go through this map, uh, trying to go as quick as you can before the time runs out, and try and avoid all these people. Now, it's very, very blocky, as you can see, but I let it go. It has got a style all of its own, Color Clash uh, galore. Uh, as I say, if you had it as an early game, you might have played it a bit with the dials on the, uh, the top left there, but um, yes. It's not, it's not, it's not super brilliant, but it's of an era, so I let it go. Formula One, you know, I like that sort of thing. Uh, Crazy Forest from Daniel was sober there, the following on from Waldo's uh, life. Uh, there it involves the uh, the cat and the dog uh, this time. Collect all the objects as we go through. It's a jolly little adventure, and uh, there's puzzles there to solve too. It's been created like a lot of them have with AGD, which is Arcade Game Designer, or um, the MPAGG, which comes slightly afterwards by Jonathan Caldwell. It holds together well as a game and uh, you know it's well worth looking at everything Daniel uh, comes up with. Nigel Mansell's World Championship from back in the day, a very accomplished uh, chase racer. You need your spectrum eyes on because the frame rate isn't brilliant but it's doing a lot of stuff and it is detailed graphics. Monotone uh, all the way round. I played this game on the SNES and the Commodore Amiga and the Spectrum. It does, it, it does okay for what it is and the kids imagination would take you a long way and I think it's an accomplished um, a race did come out quite late in the day, but uh, take some play, and it does play like a, a, a racer there uh, too. A bit of undulation. Oriental Hero. This one's a little bit duff. Uh, it did come after Ninja uh, Master, which was like uh, a button masher, which I think worked uh, quite well. This one is a bit unforgiving, really. Uh, you need to defeat a number of people on each level, and then you've got an end level boss. The first one is the Cobra, which I never got to at all. If you manage to get there, then let me know. But um, one hit and you're dead, and it should have been a bit of a more of an enjoyable experience if it had uh, like an energy meter rather than dying straight away. Poor. Uh, Bubble Frenzy. Uh, quite an innovative homebrew. You need to get to the uh, well. You need to destroy all the bubbles by making them land on the spikes below, uh, without getting hit by them themselves. So what makes this game extra super tricky is the time ticking down in the uh, middle right there. Uh, so you need to get all the bubbles on the spikes before that time runs out, and don't get hit by the bubbles either. And you do this by knocking holes in the floor. So it's strategic, baby. It's strategic. Um, it will have you ripping your hair out. Space Command. I didn't really like this too much. Graphically it's, it's uh, nice, but uh, you need to defend this city uh, from alien and enemy attack. Every time they bump into that um, force field protecting the city, that will weaken to it. it's eventually gone, but um, yeah, it survives as long as you can, but it's always going to end the same way. Uh, there's no attack waves to finally destroy, they will just keep coming at you forever and ever, and some go games will be extremely brief, and that annoys me silly. Superbike Trans Am doesn't play like Super Hang On or anything uh, like that. Uh, uses a nice engine though. You can get some massive uh, air by jumping over big obstacles uh, over the platform. But like Super Hang On, if you can get your eyes on where the road is, like Super Hang On, the time is ticking down and um, you will get um, big changes of colour every time you go through different levels like that. Extended time, the wheel doesn't look like it's moving, but I didn't think it was too bad, uh, but I prefer Super Hang On, but it's easier than Super Hang On. 
uh, boot scale in a photo again. You see those magenta ghosts that are quite often prevalent in a lot of these games. It's a bit like Pengo, really. Uh, you must, um, from the arcades, you've got to push blocks to kill your magenta assassin, and he'll be trying to do the same to you. As soon as you killed all of them, it's on to the next stage there. And, uh, you know, don't run out of time either. We'll get progressively more difficult, but again, doable. I might have completed the game in the review. I can't quite uh, remember. Would have been great in two-player, but there's no two-player ups. It's just you versus the magenta twits. Vampire Killer, a very basic uh, game. Uh, it's not written in basic, but I don't think it's too far off the way it's drawing it. It's very, very slow. Uh, you've got to kill Count Dracula. It's at floor 12 of this building, and you do that by going up lifts. Now, the annoying bit of this is some of the lifts are fake lifts. Uh, some of them got things in that immediately kill you, and um, they kill you so often, it makes you think, oh, Dracula can live this time. Maybe I'll just burn the house from outside. Uh, very frustrating, a poor experience. Zombie Zombie. Uh, this was made with the same engine as Ant Attack, but Ant Attack is the better one of the two. Basically, you must get in a helicopter and then uh, track down where the zombies are, land near them, and then trick them to fall down holes in the, the walls. That's pretty much it, really. You can fire a little bit uh, there, but not a great range. There are some tactics to be involved here, but most of the time you're running through just an empty maze. And this game excelled on uh, when it was Ant Attack, of course, because the ants were there and you had to rescue your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Uh, Nuraz in a photo again. Now this one's very um, uh, innovative where you must pick up these playing cards and uh, chuck them into another playing card which got the same sort of like uh, marker on it. So this one's Q. I need to throw it into a Q again. That was K. That might be Q over there. No, Q and A. Well this time it doesn't work. Do, do. But it is a, it's a good game. Uh, it starts off fairly easy. You can recognise that magenta ghost. KK, I've done that there. Uh, you can throw the cars into the uh, magenta ghost to get an extra bonus point. Uh, Mission Elevator, it's an evolution from Elevator Action, although the two aren't related directly. Again, uh, you need to collect clues by going up and down the elevators and shooting the henchmen, but some of the clues might be hidden behind bushes or curtains or plants. Uh, there, and you can't access certain parts of the building until you find keys. Uh, to get round there so that's where the uh, challenge would be it's got more frames of animation in the main character than elevator action but I prefer the uh, simplicity of elevator action to this one uh, top down now it's an exploration game you need to open all the trunks all the chests uh, to find um, I think a key or a treasure map uh, there. It uh, suffers from amazing slowdown uh, as you go around this lot on the screen because it's not flip screen, which might have worked a little bit better. It's trying to scroll it as you go along. But not only have they done that, they've given themselves an almighty task by doing a really detailed background for an 8 bit game. And so there's the spectrum struggles to um, move that across. Um, it is, it's quite fun. Uh, Old Tower, another one from Retro Souls. You've got this zippy bloke which uh, goes around and he must collect all the coins there. It's um, You can go upside down on sides. It's all about seeing where you can zip to because uh, you stick like glue without uh, hitting any of the nasties. Now, there'll be some stationary nasties, some nasties will go around the screen trying to kill you. Uh, it scrolls quite well also, and it's good fun. As soon as you've got all the objects, you go through the exit and it's on to the next stage. Old Tower. It's one of the better ones, Valley of the Dead. Now, the sounds of this will jar you. It's a Barry Jones special. You must control this hot air balloon through very, very, very narrow caverns. Good luck with that one. I don't think it's going to work too much. But anyway, I got frustrated silly uh, trying to play this game. If there was one of the sounds, and that would be great. You've got the whole thing. If you're used to the C5 series, also by Barry Jones, he picks some very odd sounds. You can load different levels though on the tape, but you're giving it pretty much the same result each time. Mad Mix Game is a version of Pac-Man with uh, sort of like special power-ups, I suppose. Monochrome again, although the power-ups include being chased by a hippo, and also there's a bit where you can like fire like space invaders and shoot at the ghosts that way. It scrolls okay for a ZX Spectrum game. I didn't mind it. Uh, it's no uh, replacement for Pac-Man, but at least like unlike all the other clones, it does try and do something a little bit different as well, and it's a, it's a good play. Uh, Maze Death Rally X. Um, this is a homebrew um, of reworking of, of Rally X from the arcades. Good music playing all the way around. Uh, it was converted back in the day as Maze Death uh, Race, I think, which we'll come to in this uh, 50. But it moves, moves so fast there. Collect all the uh, flags or 10 flags to get to the next stage. Rather good and avoid getting hit by all the red parading, uh, parading uh, cars, which are probably Ferrari, aren't they? Anyway, let's go round. 
Mad Mix 2. Now, Mad Mix 1 was typically Pac-Man. Mad Mix 2, it takes you into an isometric world. Um, it's no Pac-Mania, which did the thing the best. What, uh, what a good uh, alternative, really. There's a... Uh, well, other nasties that will kill you apart from ghosts. There's a boxing glove that will punch you also. You can jump like um, Pac-Mania. But uh, yes, it's a different uh, animal. So it's good if you haven't got Pac-Mania. But if you've got Pac-Mania, play Pac-Mania instead. But a good alternative. Switchblade. Um, I have first played this on the Commodore Amiga. I've since played it on the Commodore 64 as well. It's interesting on the ZX Spectrum. It's got all the elements uh, there, uh, fighting and all sorts of stuff. You need to find pieces of a shattered sword um, to put them back together again. It's clever because it only uses bits of the screen every now and again and it reveals them when you get to certain areas and the rest of it gets drawn in. Good shading but very monochrome. It's not too bad. I prefer the Amiga version but this is good too. Uh, Terrapins, this is a homebrew from Alan Turvey. Uh, I was just playing a demo version here, but you control a Terrapin around a Pac-Man like maze and you must rescue all of your babies by hitting the question marks and then taking them to the house, uh, which appears randomly in one of the corners. I'm the green Terrapin going round, the yellow things are chasing me. I've got, we can get one baby at a time uh, and then um, deliver them to where they need to go. That's pretty much it really. It is a challenge. Uh, striker in the crypts of Trogan, uh, a rather detailed um, platformer uh, there. Um, the character is not too similar from the Arab enemies from Turmoil, which is a game I really, really like. Jumping is a little bit stiff here, but um, it, it's not too bad nonetheless. Some good end level bosses, but to go as far as you can. Graphically, not a million miles away from uh, Ghosts and Goblins in the attention detail here, but uh, the playability is a little bit limited for me. I would like a bit more fun. Uh, Chips Challenge is a classic puzzle game. Control this character called Chips over a remarkable number of levels. I think about 144 uh, get different keys to get through different doors uh, collect power-ups and walk over fire over water and ice and you're doing it against a time limit the whole time as well so quite an interesting uh, little game chip challenge but you need to spectrum eyes on with this scrolling because it will give you a headache if played for any prolonged length of time good luck with that one Cursed Demons of Wallachia. Now you take on the role as this vampire hunter. Uh, you must take out all of Count Dracula's evil vampire buddies. And you do this by collecting stakes, then getting coffins, and then, uh, well, they automatically get killed. As soon as you do all that, then you've won the game. And well done you if you do manage to do that. I thought this was good fun, this game. Quite novel. I uh, like the uh, jumping in it. And you can destroy enemies by jumping on their heads, which is rather cool, rather than just doing shooting stuff. And there are taunts down the bottom of the screen, too. Uh, Maze of Death Race. And this is the one I was telling you about. We've got the homebrew of Maze of Death Rally X. Uh, it still moves quite quick for the era. It's an early game. It's quite easy to get stuck in the maze. Sometimes it doesn't draw the uh, the flags properly. But anyway, uh, I would have ignored that as a kid playing it back in the day and I would have had quite good fun. Don't bump into any of the rocks or any of the dead ends, which aren't drawn perfectly here. But uh, you'll soon get the idea of what to get and what not to get. Uh, do that as quickly as you possibly can. Rogue Trooper. This is from another character uh, from uh, 2000 AD uh, comics. I made a bit of a meal of this, but you wander around uh, collecting ammo and uh, bits and pieces in order to fraught the enemy. Uh, it's seriously doable. I think if I played it again, I would do. It's got that white and blue color, which isn't uh, too bad. There's three people on the top right who will shout various bits of encouragement or tell you what to do each time. Don't tread on landmines, both in the game and in real life. Uh, Chromanoids are really clever homebrew this. It's a maze uh, based game. You control this uh, monster by pressing a button you can circle through various colours and you destroy enemies coming onto the screen by being the same colour as them. As soon as you destroy the uh, correct number uh, then it's on to the next stage but as you can imagine uh, there will be many coming onto the uh, these uh, the level or later ones and you have to go through the colours as quickly as you can. Bump into them as the wrong colour and you're doomed. Nice graphics there on the vegetation. Dirt Track Race no, it's trying to be uh, Nitro on the Commodore Amiga to a certain extent, but um, 
the uh, the track isn't obvious where you need to go for a dimbo like me and it is reliant on collecting power-ups to upgrade your car because I kept going the wrong way it gave me too many penalty points and I think it was punishing me too much so I never managed to collect any money but it sure does scroll good it feels like a homebrew game but it isn't uh, but I would like to get better at it enjoy it more to be a bit like Nitro on the Amiga but it wasn't chef's mate quite a, a basic um, um, a fast food uh, sort of like a clone but um, it moves slower it's not in basic but it might as well be um, there's about 10 levels I think to do uh, the time's ticking down but you will get a bonus if you collect a certain bit of food so the order is very important here uh, which way you do it in I got a bit of fun on it the character is very very dizzy like like in uh, fast food so I haven't tried to hide it there but you know uh, Booty the remake a game that didn't really need to be uh, remade hasn't got that annoying classic music that was on the original booty but the idea is the same uh, good shading here uses a lot more color the parrot is there to kill you you play Jim the cabin boy if you're unfamiliar with the game uh, booty and you must collect as much treasure as you possibly can not many people would have completed the original game or indeed this one maybe did complete the original then have a go at this this uh, one why, why, why not and it's been well done it's been done with love but it's booty the remake uh, chef's mate 2 building on the original chef's mate come out the same year feels like it's just uh, some tidying up rather than a, a sequel in his red. It's got some different stages in there, a few more stages in total. Uh, the scoreboard's been cleared up uh, a little bit, but it is essentially the same game. If you like Chef's Mate, you'll like Chef's Mate too. No real reason to have both of them, so go for Chef's Mate uh, too. But, you know, it's not any quicker, it's not any more special, it's just odd cosmetics and more mazes. City Slicker, one of the most annoying games of all time. So easy to die on this one, but you've got defend the Houses of Parliament uh, from being blown up by this um, this terrorist uh, person. Any mere touching with the terrorist you will die uh, and it will blow up the uh, House of Parliament and you'll get a very prolonged game over sequence which annoys you as you try and get back into the game. Poorly executed this, a very very a weak game. We just sold a few because of the screenshots of people might have been kind to think it's better than it is but it's slow, it's laborious and it's unfair. Uh, Pack Hick 3, the great sewer escape um, building on Pack Hick was released back in the day and uh, Pack Hick 2 from uh, Daniel Sober. You control this Pac-Man who's a little bit worse for you, he's a little bit drunk and you must get to the tubes each time by collecting uh, keys and getting around the various nasties. It does uh, gradually teach you what the power-ups are about there it's teaching me that there's a gun involved that can only kill red ghosts and it's great fun all the way round got a little bit of humor in there and I like it for that a gherkins Christmas carnage there'll be a few Christmassy games now in a row uh, this is better than most of the Christmas games normally they're a bit poor but get away with it because of the um, the content matter but you need to de uh, defend Alan's present for all the nasties they will try and get closer and closer to it uh, there it is flashing like the flag of Sweden down the bottom there but kill all the nasties I think you have to get to uh, 10 of them I think you need to shoot to get to the next stage and as you can see it gets gradually more and more complicated as you go through it's gherkin it's Christmas it's carnage uh, robot Santa um, not as good as Gherkin's Christmas uh, carnage I would say very very small character about the size of Lemming from the game uh, Lemmings lots of multi colors here but you need to go around collecting stars uh, well not stars presents actually and you can go through these or like um uh, air vents as well which pushed you um, upwards uh, good uh, uh, you know cutesy sort of like graphics but it did my eyes in a little bit it wasn't my favourite game but as a Christmassy way it's, uh, it wasn't bad it served a sort of like purpose Xmas Memory the classic um, pairs matching game you need to uncover two uh, cards exactly the same if you do that they stay uncovered and you must cover the whole of them as quickly as you possibly can good music to follow you through I was good on my first few goes but as you get older your brain gradually uh, deteriorates and uh, mine is no uh, no different and I uh, was a bit a bit slow it randoms the positions of the cards each time so you know it's a bit of a, a long play of value if you want to watch that video see if you can beat my sort of like time Christmas gift hunt um, someone said this is a bit similar to Postman Pat I suppose it is a little bit as he's going around except without the van um, high winds have scattered uh, Santa's presents all over the town and he's crash landed and he needs to go and get the presents back but there's people patrolling the area trying to stop him from getting the presents there's red snowman made out of red snow people from the foreign legion for some reason but you need to go everywhere uh, to get all the gifts back and there's 80 in total I think good luck 
Uh, car Wars, a very innovative sort of like game. It's not a race game, as the name suggests, although you are in a car. You must go around collecting coins, upgrade your car, but it's, it's basically solving a maze and getting enough coins to unlock stuff. Uh, repair the damage by getting these bonus things. It's very cutesy, it's very, very arcadey. I would have liked this engine to be used as a, um, as a pure out racer, but anyway, that's just me. I do like racing games, but this isn't that. It's a puzzle come racer game. There I am bribing the police, I can get through that uh, exit point. Get further on. Super Robin Hood. It's not really that super. Uh, the jumping is very, very painful to get onto certain uh, levels. Um, it's it's a pity, really. Um, he, he can fire his bow and arrow, but uh, why not? He is Robin Hood. That's the bare minimum you expect from Robin Hood. But getting keys, going through doors, but it's, it's very, very unplayable. It's not as bad as City Slicker. Compared to City Slicker, it's a great game, but so so is everything uh, compared to that one. So, and also ran. And the last game we looked at in this selection is Dilithium uh, Lift, uh, not based on the Dilithium Crystals on uh, Star Trek. Um, basically, I prefer Transversion, but the idea is the same. Uh, go around collecting all of these um, nodes without getting shot by the Sentinels on the perimeter. You get extra time by getting those flashing things in any of the corners, and the time is a little bit limited to do what you're supposed to be able to do. Yes, 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 it's a puzzle game, it's a game of skill, and there we go, so that's the end of that 50 in this sort of range. That was ZX Spectrum Games reviewed on the channel, 1,151 through to 1,200 as we gunning towards 2,000. Won't that be incredible? So thank you for watching this video as always, and good luck if you're going through them in any kind of order. Here's to the uh, next one, which I saw will be soon. Until so next time, take great care of yourself, and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.